Welcome to the Chris Abraham Show, Season 4, Episode Octane, Octane, 18. And I am here in a windy, windy day in a windy, windy park filled with cars going by and people and birds and yap, 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 it happened. So I apologize. I do have a dead cat on my Sony. Uh, WS853 recorder and I am reaching out to you today to report on um, just one week of, uh, of carnivore diet and getting back on the rowing machine and the reason why I'm so motivated to talk about it today is because TLDR um, uh, what is it called um, um, Spoiler alert, uh, my knees don't bother me. I'll be right back. Talk to you soon. Welcome back to season four, episode 18. Uh, my name is Chris Abraham, and I wanted to tell you that I've been on, uh, I've been on a carnivore diet now for six Six days, seven days, and I um, I'm regular, which is something I was extremely afraid about, afraid of, afraid of not being. And secondly, my knees do not feel all messed up at all. Um, at 333 pounds and six foot three, I hate my knees, but I believe that most of that had to do with. Um, in, in inflammation and I should have known because when I was uh, a little boy my parents had to deal with the fact that I was always sneezing and always um, my nose was always runny and I always had sinus drip and I was always stuffy and um, my parents took me to an allergist in Kailua across the Pali from Oahu, Honolulu, where I uh, lived. Um, and, um, and they did a, a prick test. And that has nothing to do with my nether regions. That has to do with my, sh my arm. They would uh, prick me with different, different uh, things that I might be allergens, things I might be allergic to. And turns out I'm allergic to everything. Uh, including or excluding plumeria but um, I should have known that if I'm that easily allergic and that completely allergic to everything that my lungs and my nose and my sinuses inhales and breathes from the world that I'm probably allergic to loads of stuff that I consume and uh, now that I'm only eating eggs beef butter, coffee, water, sometimes uh, some pickles, even though that's not strict. I feel really good. And um, I'm on Reddit right now in a, um, so if you go to reddit.com slash you slash Chris Abraham, you'll see that I'm talking to people about, uh, in the carnivore sub, about um, how easy it is to get full on the carnivore diet. That just like eating that much meat, or just only meat, kind of makes me feel a little nauseated. Um, not because I care about the, so the souls of poor little animals, I don't. But for whatever reason, 
Um, I could eat, you know, fries and chips and beans and rice and all that kind of other stuff all day long. I can eat lentils and curries, and but if I eat, you know, a big meal of, uh, of, of ground beef and butter and eggs, little hot sauce and salt and pepper, I'm done and I'm like, Ugh. so one of the arguments that we're having on the Reddit, not arguments, one of the discussions we have as whether or not, as to whether or not um, you need to tr drink more water under a carnivore diet or less or only when you're thirsty. My little app called Simple App is an intermittent fasting app and it wants me to drink a gallon of water a day. It wants me to drink 155 ounces a day, but also I am 333 pounds and six foot three, so maybe I should drink a gallon of water a day, maybe in order to feed all of my ginormous fat ass fat cells Maybe I should definitely be drinking that much water to compensate. So, I don't know. But I do know that I'm thinking that maybe drinking that much water helps with the, um, helps with the, the movement uh, through the system and out the other end. Um, I'm extremely afraid of that. But I think what does that is things like cheese and, you know, other types of things like dairy and stuff. Who knows? But I am taking a fiber supplement, but not a fiber supplement that has any type of sugar or anything. I'm just taking that type of fiber supplement that's just like some sort of husk or shell or something, and uh, that's it. So I'm taking that. I'm taking multivitamins. I'm taking my prescription. Yesterday I had a little container of bone broth, beef bone broth. That was awesome. I might do that again today. Later I'll stop by Giant and get myself a big bottle of beef bone broth. And um, that's how it's going. My, But I might, it might not be 100% the diet. Like, I've started... Uh, making sure that I'm on the rowing machine every day. I'm not up to 60 minutes a day, which is what I aim for. My gold, my golden uh, baseline is 60 slow rowing minutes a day. And if you want to see, I'll try to keep all that stuff updated on reddit.com slash r slash slow rowing. Um, if you're interested, please join me there. But, you know, basically I'm rowing at 22 to 24 strokes per minute at around uh, 3 minutes to 3 minutes 20 per 500 meters. And sometimes when I lose myself and I'm really into a television show or a movie, it'll get down to 2 minutes 50 seconds per 500 meters and when I really get used to it and I kind of get extremely comfortable with the gold standard of 60 minutes I am going to start adding you know um, I, in the rowing world in crew they call that kind of meterage that kind of work they call it steady state where I would do you know 2 minutes 50 for 60 minutes um, going for you know I mean, everybody who's anybody involved with Concept 2s is connected via ERG data, which is an app. And that ERG data app connects to my um, Performance Monitor 5, PM5 device via Bluetooth. And that logs to log.concept2.com. So it logs every meter that I do, which of course right now goes towards um, the, is it the fall challenge right now? But it doesn't matter. I want to do an hour every day, and that to me is around, at least during the start, a little under 10,000 meters a day. As I become stronger 
and more comfortable with the rowing, it'll probably be more like 15,000, 12,500, something like that. And if I add power 10s, power 20s, which is basically rowing for um, pulling as hard as I can for uh, 15 or 25 strokes, or, you know, 13, actually, you know, like pulling hard for 10 strokes or 20 strokes, but then there's like not included in those 10 strokes is what's called an up one, up two. So it ends up being 12 hard strokes, maybe 22 hard strokes if you add the two strokes that are dedicated to ramping up from uh, steady state into hard strokes. So adding those, I think 20 strokes uh, would be really good for um, all the things that uh, high intensity gives to your body. It, you know, it's anabolic as opposed to aerobic. No, it's, sorry, it's anaerobic as opposed to aerobic. Oh, by the way, yesterday when I said interior chain, I guess so, but I meant posterior chain. The posterior chain is the part of your body that is activated when you do kettlebell swings. It is also most of the, uh, the uh, nervous system and muscular chain that is uh, triggered, activated when you do, when you do, um, when you row on a sliding, uh, on a slidey seat, on a sliding seat uh, rower. Uh, I guess it's also if you're on a rowboat or whatever, but it's more along the lines if you really get your hamstrings, your glutes, your lower back, your uh, upper back, uh, your scapula, etc. Um, so, it's really exciting about these knees. I must tell you that there seems to be a direct correlation with um, not being in pain and being generally more active. So the less in pain you are, the more active you'll be willing to become. The lighter you are, the more likely you are to, uh, to be active. The fitter you are, the more likely you are to be fitter. So it seems to me that um, fitness is uh, a game of hockey stick where at in the beginning you're uh, it's really challenging but as you start to become more fit and more mobile and more and, and, and in less pain it means that you'll be doing more standing more walking more running more climbing than you will be if you're in pain. You'll spend more time standing and sitting and lying down. So if you can find a way, whether it's through diet or physical therapy or getting onto a rowing machine and working on range of movement, exor- range of movement exercises like on the rowing machine or leg extension, um, I've always found in terms of lubricating my knees, getting onto, getting into a gym and on a leg extension machine uh, has always been really good for my my range of movement and for my mobility with regards to my creaky knees. You should do it because if it, on the other hand, my CrossFit buddy, my business partner, Dan Kruger, he tells me that at his level of eight pack, Uh, eight pack, uh, super trap, super deltoid, super pecs, um, super quads. He tells me that in the last 10 years, he's always been sore. So all I can say to him is fuck that. I don't want to be sore every day. Um, I don't mind being sore a little bit of the day or tired a little bit of the day, but I don't want to be constantly sore. So I think that um, moderate exercise is going to be my pathway into a longer life and a better future rather than high intensity, extreme intensity exercise ever will be. Anyway, we'll be right back with season four, episode 18 closing right after this.
Oh, thank you. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is Chris Abraham, The Chris Abraham Show, formerly known as Chris Cast. Season 4, episode 14. My name is Chris Abraham. He says redundantly. Uh, you can reach me at chris at abraham.su. You can reach me at chrisabraham.com. You can reach me at calendly.com slash chrisabraham slash 15. You can signal telegram or WhatsApp me. You can text me or you can call me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. You can find me at twitter.com slash chrisabraham, facebook.com slash chrisabraham, uh, youtube.com slash chrisabraham, instagram.com slash chrisabraham, linkedin.com slash in slash chrisabraham, uh, chris-abraham.com is my Tumblr, uh, no agenda show, sorry, no agenda social.com slash at chris is me, uh, guravik.su slash at chris is me. If you go to guravik.su, you can sign up for an account, I believe, uh, Mastodon account, and follow me there. I would love it if anybody joined, if anybody followed me there. Currently, nobody listens to me in the entire world. Even though a woman who goes to my cafe thinks that I'm, and, and my best friend, my mother didn't think I was funny or anything. My mother didn't think I was interesting at all. It's supposed to be your mother who loves you, but my my buddy Mark and my um, my friend from uh, from Ididos, they both think that I'm the funniest thing in the entire world. And while I think that's only because they adore me and because I've got their funny bone and, and the fact that they uh, are charmed by me through whatever, through chemistry. But uh, if you think that's true too, please give me a review, give me some stars, give me some love, give me some money, give me some jobs, give me some gigs, and I'll talk to you soon. Lots of love. Talk to you soon. Love you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.